In this example, we're going to use a z-test to find out if a group has changed, to see if a group has uh, grown. So this uh, z-test is an inferential statistics test. We're going to take a sample and we're going to make a conclusion about the whole population. In this case, we're going to see if the, the sample indicates that the group has, has grown or not. So the information that we have is that a college group's long-term average attendance is 100. That means they've been measuring attendance for a year or maybe two years, but they know that it's been stable at about 100. That's what, what it's been for a while. And it has a standard deviation of 10. So that means even 100 is the average. Most of the time, it's between 90 and 110. And almost always, it's between 80 and 120. But now they've had some type of outreach activity and they've measured the attendance again four Sundays out of that outreach activity to see if they've got evidence that the group has grown. And so we have four uh, uh, data points here. It was 100 the first Sunday, then 105, 95, and 120. So we want to see if we can make a conclusion that the group has grown. Just looking at it, it looks like, well, one Sunday was the same, one above, one below, uh, fourth Sunday, well above. Ooh, is that an indication that it's grown? Um, it's, it's a little hard to say just by, by looking at it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a z-test. Now, the way that we're going to do this, now it turns out the z-test isn't really common, and you probably won't do it very often in real life. So I've made up a z-test calculator. And we use the z-test because it's the most simple of all the inferential uh, tests. So we always start statistics with uh, uh, z-tests. Next week, we'll go on to other tests that are more, uh, 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 more common because they can be applied in different situations. And we'll see that Excel will do it a lot uh, quicker and we won't need a calculator. But for this week, we're going to focus on z-tests and we're going to use this calculator. So I'm going to click over on this tab for the blank z-test calculator. And I, so we've got the calculator portion up here and then some instructions here. I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to, just everything here and I'm going to copy it to the problem that I want to uh, where I want to put it on mini exercise 12.1 and you can copy this calculator and put it wherever you want to in Excel for your exercises. So I'm going to do control C for copy. I'm going to go back to the mini exercise 12.1 tab and I will paste it about here. And now we have everything, and it's got a number of formulas built into it so that you don't have to worry about copying the formulas. Now, how do we use the z-test calculator? So here's here down here, I've got notes on using this calculator. So to use this calculator, the first thing you want to do is the, enter the name of the variable in the heading of the table. Now, I actually said this is optional, but it's a good idea. So we're going to call this attendance because that's what we're, we're measuring the four weeks. Let me make the column a little wider so we can read it. Okay, the second thing that we need to do is we need to enter our data into the table. Now, I've already got some data entered in there. Otherwise, it would just show error signs. But I'm going to go up to the table, and I'm going to copy this. Now, we've got four Sundays. So highlight it, control copy. And now I'm going to uh, put the first cell there, and I'm going to do control V, and it copies the cells there. So now we've got the data there. Now, if this had been a lot longer, it would have gone outside of the table, but the table would uh, auto expand to, uh, to include all of it. So, um, so we've done A, changed the title here, B, copied the data into the table. And now we need to take these values, the population, population mean and the population standard deviation, which are the two things that we need to do a, a standard deviate, a, a Z test or a standard deviate test, and replace that with what's given. So these always have to be given for you to do a, a, 
a z-test. So I'm going to put the population mean is 100, and the population standard deviation is 10. And now it's automatically done the calculations for us. First thing it did was it the n, the sample size, is it counted out how many were in the table. It's four. So if this was 16, it would have counted 16. And then it calculated, um, well, actually, before we look at everything that's calculated, let's, let's not look at the results yet. Let's clearly, um, the second step is you must clearly state your hypothesis before you do the calculation. So before we look at the calculation, we have to be clear on whether we're making a one-tailed or two-tailed hypothesis. So our hypothesis is going to be a one-tailed hypothesis because we're hypothesizing that the group has grown. Um, we're not, a two-tailed hypothesis would be the, that the group has changed size, but we are only interested if it's grown. So I'm going to type out the hypothesis here, and you need to be very clear uh, with your hypothesis always. After the outreach activity, the college group's attendance is greater than the long term, or we can say the population average of 100. So this is going to be a one-tailed hypothesis. Now we can't decide afterwards if we wanted it to be a, a one-tailed or a two-tailed, because that would be cheating, because we could see what the results are, and we'd say, oh, it wasn't strong enough to get a one-tailed uh, uh, result, uh, so, but it was, or it's not, it wasn't, we, if we started off with a two-tailed hypothesis and we didn't make it, then we could, and then change it to a one-tailed, that would be cheating because we would be looking at the results before and adapting our, uh, uh, our hypothesis to our results. And that's called p-hacking, um, cheating to get the p-value less than 0.05. So we've always got to make the hypothesis, uh, before we do the calculation. So now we can look at the calculations. And the first thing that we get is the X bar obtained. Now Excel can't put bars over X's very easily. So I just wrote out X bar obtained. So that's the average that we obtained from the sample. And it was 105. So the average of these four things is 105. Excel calculated that automatically for us. And then it calculates the Z obtained from the samples. This isn't a, just a, a Z score for some individual score like we've looked at previously. This is a, um, a, a statistic based on the sample that we can use to make a conclusion about the population. And so here's the, the X bar obtained by the population mean divided by not just a population standard deviation like we would with a, a z-score, but the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So that comes out to a z obtained of 1, which isn't very big. That's like just one standard deviation above the mean. And so the one-tailed probability is 0.159. So let's look at what we're, how we're going to interpret this. So once you've entered the data, you must interpret it. And the main thing to interpret it to see if our hypothesis supported is to look at the p-values. And the main, the general rule, and this should be frozen into your head, is that if p is less than 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. Now remember, rejecting the null hypothesis means that our main hypothesis must be true. So if P is less than 0.05, then our hypothesis is going to be supported. Um, now there's always a chance that there's when we, when we choose 0.05 as a cutoff level, there's a 5% chance that it was um, uh, a type 1 error, an alpha error, that um, uh, it wasn't 
that's not really the case, but we can be basically 95% sure that it is true. So we can, if P is less than 0.05, we can say we found strong evidence that the hypothesis was supported. So that's what P less than 0.05 means. But if P is greater than 0.05, we retain the null hypothesis. Now, what does retain mean? We, that means that we keep it as an option. We don't uh, uh, say, aha, the null hypothesis is true and the main hypothesis is false. No, we say the null hypothesis might be true, which means that the main hypothesis might be true also, which basically means we don't know anything. We are certain that we can't make a conclusion, which is not something that you usually want to say in life, that you can be certain that you can't make a conclusion. But in statistics, we've got to be honest and say what the, dev the evidence indicates. And if P is greater than 0 0.05, we have to say we don't know. So that's the case here. P equals 0 0.15, 159. So there's a 16% chance that we could have gotten these results by, by hazard, by chance, if the group hadn't grown. Now, it kind of looks like the group has grown because the average is 105, but even if it hadn't, there'd be a 16% chance that we could have gotten these, uh, th this type of data if it, ha if it hadn't grown. So the next thing we need to do is we can't just say, okay, we don't know. We need to communicate and we need to communicate accurately what this means. And this is where APA format becomes really valuable because it gives you a real standard way of communicating all the relevant information so that someone reading your conclusion knows what you were talking about, what the data said, and they can also tell that you knew what you were talking about. So we need to include a number of things in our final APA uh, uh, conclusion, we need to state what the population mean is, and that's represented by the uh, an M in uh, italics. I, uh, statistics are always in italics. The population standard deviation, which will be SD. So that's, these are the two things for the population that we're given. The sample size N, that depends on our sample. Our sample mean, M, and then our statistic, and that needs to be in italics also. And the because and the p value, whether and whether you used a one or two tailed test is, and then you need to state what your hypothesis was and whether it was supported or not. So all these things need to be included in our APA summary. So I'm going to show you how we can do this, and you can use this as a boilerplate for other uh, uh, reporting. So I'm going to say that um, the attendance of a college group was measured on several Sundays. So now I'm going to give information about the sample. Control I for italics, N equals four. So we had four Sundays in our um, sample, a sample size of four. The mean, control I, shift M, control I, equals 105. So the average of our sample was 105 after an outreach activity. Okay. Now let's see what the hypothesis was. The hypothesis that the college group's average attendance after the activity was greater than the long-term attendance pattern. Now let's let's so that's the population average. Let's put that in here. So control I, shift M, control I, the mean of the population equals 100 with a standard deviation 
equal to 10. So that's the population mean. And we're going to say this hypothesis was not supported. Now we need to give the reason that it wasn't supported. And that in means we're going to put the, um, the Z uh, statistic. So control I, small z, control I, z equals 1.00, comma. Now we're going to put the P value. So control I, P, control I, space equals. Now we could put put 0.159, but um, usually in APA format, we just report two significant figures, two decimal points after the, after the decimal equals 0.16. And we don't put the zero in front because that just causes noise. noise. Uh, probabilities are always uh, uh, one or less, so we don't need the zero there. P equals 0.16, and we should state that it was one tailed because that's what our hypothesis was that's the uh, uh, the hypothesis that we can use so we say the attendance of a college group was measured on several Sundays n equals 4 mean equals 105 after an outreach activity the hypothesis that the group's average attendance after the activity was greater than the long-term attendance pattern which had an average of 100 with a standard deviation of 10 was not supported. Um, we don't have any evidence that it grew. Uh, Z equals 1.0, P equals 0.16, um, and it's a one-tailed hypothesis. All right, so that's how we can use the Z calculator to do a Z test to see if a sample is different than the population.